everybody, hello and welcome to another evening of 1001 Arabian Nights. Let me just readjust my camera. Just a little bit, there we go. And I'm going to turn the music down. Although it's really beautiful again tonight. I love, love, love this CD. So gorgeous. Such beautiful music, really. Okay, it's good. All right, let me just adjust this. So I'm a little bit late tonight because I was in the city and so <laughs> but everything's new and fantastic this evening. So here we go. And now we are on the 92nd night of 1001. Arabian Nights. I hope you are sitting comfortably and I hope you are going to enjoy this evening's reading. I said in some of my links when I sent it out that tonight is going to be a surprise. It's going to be a surprise for me as much as it is for you. So let's see how we get along tonight in the 92nd night of 1001 Arabian Nights. And we've only got about a thousand nights to go. So no, wait, 900 nights to go, excuse me. So, getting there slowly but surely, right? So, here we go. Now, when it was the 92nd night, Shahrazad said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that the infidels called to one another, saying, Take we vengeance wreak for Luca. While Hadub, king of Greece, cried aloud, Ho to our revenge for Abriza! Thereupon, King Zal al Makan shouted, Ho, servants of the requiting king! Smite the children of denial and disobedience with the blanch of sword and the brown of spear. So the Muslims returned to the infidels and plied them with a keen aged scimitar whilst their heralds cried aloud, Up! And at the foes of the faith, all ye who love the prophet-elect, with hope of salvation on the day of fear, to win favour of the bountiful, the forgiving one. For verily, the garden of paradise is under the shadow of swords. And behold, Sharkan and his men charged down upon the infidels and cut off their retreat and wheeled and tawnied among the ranks. When lo, a knight of goodly presence opened a passage through the army of unbelievers and circled hither and thither amongst the deniers, cutting and thrusting and covering the ground with heads and trunks so that the faithless feared him and their necks bent under his lunge and hue. He was girt with two swords, his glances and his brand and he was armed with two lances, one of bamboo cane and the other his straight, wand-like shape. And his flowing hair stood him instead of many warriors, even as saith the poet, Lord, not long hair, except it be dispread in twofold lots on day of fight and fray. Or a youth who bears his lance twixt flank and thigh, from many a whiskered knight to who to win the day, and as singeth another, I say to him, what while he slings his sword, for sword shall serve those looks that sword like show, says he. My savour looks for those I love, my sword. For those whose sweets of love unknow. When Shah Khan saw him, he said to him, I conjure thee by the Quran and the attributes of the compassionate one, O champion of the champions, tell me who thou art. 
For verily by thy deeds this day thou hast pleased the requiting king, whom one king distracteth not from one other thing, in that thou hast been discomforting the children of impiety in rebellion, reveling. Then cried the cavalier to him, saying, Thou art he who made us brother covenant with me but yesterday. How quickly thou hast forgotten me. Thereupon he withdrew his mouth veil, so that what was hidden of his beauty was disclosed, and lo, it was none other than Zau al Makan. Then Shakan rejoiced in his brother, save that he feared for him the rush of fighting and the crush of braves are smiting. And this for two reasons. The first, his tender age, an exposure, an exposure to the evil eye, and the second, that his safety was to the kingdom the greater of the two overshadowing wings. So he said to him, O king, thou risketh thy life. So join thy steed to mine, in very sooth I fear for thee from the foe. And better thou stint hazarding thyself forth of these squadrons, that we may shoot at the enemy thine unerring shaft. Quoth Zal al Makan, I desire to even thee in fray, oh, and I will not be stopped of myself before thee in the melee. Then the host of Al Islam, heaping itself upon the infidels, girt them on all sides, warden them a right holy war, and break the power of the children of impunity and pride and stir. But King Afridun sighed when he saw the evil wreak that had befallen on the Greek. And they turned their backs from fight and addressed themselves to flight, making for the ships when, lo, there came out upon them from the sea coast another host led by the minister Dandan, Dan, the champion who was wont to make champions bite the dust and to lay load on them with cut and thrust. Nor less came forth the Emir Baham, Lord of the Provinces of Sham, amid twenty thousand horse, daughty of arm, and the host of Al Islam pressed them in front and on Frank and wrought them grievous harm. Then a body of the Muslims turned against those who in the ships remained and perdition on them reigned, till they threw themselves into the main, and they slew of them many slain, more than a hundred thousand noblemen, nor was one of their champions great or small, save from Baal and Bane. Moreover, they took their ships with all the money and treasure and cargo, save a score of keel, and the Muslims got that loot whose like was never gotten in bygone years. Nor was such cut and thrust ever heard of by men's ears. Now, amongst the booty were 50,000 horses, besides treasures and spoil past reckoning and arithmetic, Whereat the Muslims rejoiced with an exceeding joy for that Allah had given them victory and protection. Such was the case with them. But as regards the fugitive infidels, they soon reached Constantinople, whither the tidings preceded them that King Afridun had prevailed over the Muslims. So quoth the ancient dame Zat al Dawahi. I know that my son Hadub, king of Rum, 
is no runner gate, and that he feareth not the Islamatic hosts, but will restore the whole world to the Nazarene faith. Then she bade the great King Afridun give command that the city be decorated, and the people held festival high and drank their wines drunkenly and knew not the decrees of destiny. Now, whilst they were in the midst of their rejoicings, behold, the raven of duel and downfall croaked over them, and up came the twenty fugitive ships, wherein was the king of Caesarea. So King Afridun, lord of Constantinople, met them on the seashore, and they told him all that had befallen them from the Muslim. And they wept sore, and groaned, and moaned, and rejoicing at weal was turned into dismay of unheal. And they informed him concerned Luca, son of Shamlut, how calamity had betided him, and how death had shot him with his shaft. Thereat, the horrors of Doomday rose among upon King Afridun, and he knew that there was no making straight their crook. Then came up from them the sound of weeping and wailing. The city was full of men mourning, and the keeners were keening, and the sighs and cries were heard from all sides. And when King Hadub of Greece met King Afridun, he told him the truth of the case, and how the flight of the Muslims was by way of strategium and deceit, and said to him, Look not to see any of the army, save those who have already reached thee, When King Afridun heard these words, he fell down in a fainting fit, with his nose under his feet, and, as soon as he revived, he exclaimed, Surely the Messiah was rough with them, that he caused the Muslims to prevail over them. Then came the arch-patriarch sadly to the king, who said to him, O oh, our father, annihilation hath overtaken our army, and the Messiah hath punished us. Replied the patriarch, Grieve not, nor feel concerned, for it cannot be but that one of you had si sinned against the Messiah, and all have been punished for his offence. But now we shall read prayers for you in the churches that the Mohammedan hosts may be repelled from you. After which, the old woman, Zat al-Dawahi, came to Afridun and said to him, O king, verily, the Muslim hosts are many, and we shall never overcome them save by wile. Wherefore, I purpose to work on them by guile, and to repair this army of all is of Al Islam, haply I may be with my wish of their leader and slay their champion, even as I slew his father. If my stratagem succeed in his case, not one of the host he leads shall return to his native land, for all are strong only because of him. But I desire to have some Christian dwellers of Syria, such as go out every month and year to sell their goods, that they may help me, for this they can do. In carrying out my plan, replied the king, be it so whenever thou wilt. So she bade fetch a hundred men, natives of Nairam in Sham, 
and the king returned them. Have ye not heard what has befallen the Christians with the Muslims? Yes, answered they. And he rejoined, Know yet that this woman hath devoted her life to the Messiah and pure possessed to go forth with you, disguised as monotheists and Mohammedans, to work out a device which shall profit us and hinder the Muslims from us. Say then, are ye also willing to devote yourselves to the anointed, and I will give you a quintal of gold? He of you who have escaped shall have the money, and him of you who dieth will the Messiah reward. O king, replied they, we will devote our lives to the Messiah and we will be thy sacrifice. Thereupon, the old woman took all she required of aromatic roots and placed them in water, which she boiled over the fire till the black essence of them was extracted. She waited till the decoction was cold, then dipped the corner of a long kerchief therein and stained her face therewith. Moreover, she donned over her clothes a long garbadine with an embroidered border and took in her hand a rosary and afterwards went into the king Aphrodite, who knew her not, nor did any of his compan camp nor did any of his companions know her till she discovered herself to them. And there was none in the assembly but who thanked and praised her for her cunning. And her son rejoiced and said, May the Messiah never fail thee. Thereupon she took with her the Syrian Christians and set out for the army of Baghdad and Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. Ladies and gentlemen, I have had a very long day today. I've been up since six o'clock this morning working on my next season, which I hope is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So I am going to keep it short and sweet tonight and love you and leave you with a 25 minute read. And I'm going to leave the next night up to Saman, which will be the 93rd night. As usual, it has been an absolute pleasure reading for you. I hope you have all had a wonderful day. If you are still in lockdown, I hope you are able to cope with the situation in the best possible manner. If your life has got back to normal again, mostly, then I hope everything is turning out to be successful for you. I wish you, from my little Viennese fireplace, fireplace and from my stories of 1001 Arabian Nights, a beautiful day, a beautiful afternoon, a beautiful evening, or a wonderful night's sleep with the best dreams you can possibly have. My name is Joanna Godwin Seidel. I am the director and producer of Vienna Theatre Project, and we've been reading 1001 Arabian Nights since the lockdown, and we're going to continue reading them until, I assume, we finish all the stories. So, I hope and wish that you look after yourself. I send you many blessings. Many salams, good night.
and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.